I'm just doing that. Does that look good? It's fantastic. Your wife's on there, good. There is no clue right? to the rumor that we're giving out free Red Sox opening day tickets. Uh, I haven't seen this type of problem in a long time. Welcome to the council chambers. Again, I've been here a number of years. It's basically the same. <laughs> New faces, old faces. Okay, with that, I'd like the meeting to come to order at 6.03 uh, p.m. Clerk. Councilwoman Brock Perry? Present. Councilwoman Kipor Figueroa? Present. Councilwoman Stephanie Gonzalez? Present. Councilwoman Tammy Johnson? Present. Councilwoman Cherry Maldonado? Present. Councilwoman Andrew Rector? Present. Councilwoman Kiri Sinosiva? Present. Mr. President, we have four. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. All rise, please. America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, ma'am. Uh, three minutes allotted for the public comments. However, uh, we have hearings later on, which will also be uh, three additional minutes. Uh, and I'll do my proverbial. It has to do with finances and the budget. Uh, my question would be, is there a copy of the financials available for us to take a look tonight? It says it's on here on the agenda. Is it available? Can I get a copy? And the second is the audit. I'll ask again about the audit. I know the audit is supposedly complete. It's getting ready to be fully complete. This is now February. The council should be working on a budget for the next year, and I don't see how you're going to be able to work on that until you've got the audit completed to see where you end up last year. So those are my two concerns. And I would hope that when we start to look at the budget that we take into consideration, my understanding is this year from a few people I've talked to, is we're going to have a surplus. And the budget should be balanced. It should be between expenses and income met, match. And I would say that if we've got a budget that's in excess of what we have, we should start to take a look where we can do some, some savings for the taxpayers in the city of Central Falls. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just would like an answer on the finances. Okay. I do believe the audit is just about completely that correct? Uh, I, I believe that. Uh, surplus, I have not heard that either way. A copy of the budget that we have, some, I have something in front of it. I'll be glad to let you have it. I believe she's asking for a copy of the motion report that the finance department submits. That is available at the clerk's office. City clerk's office. Mr. Gyro. Excuse Gary. me. It's, if it's on the agenda, shouldn't we have them here at the meeting so we can take a look at them? I, I think they should be available or a packet at least available of what's on the agenda. We'll make note of that for next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Hello. My name is Hi, Raspberry. I'm actually a business owner. Um, I own True Styles Barbershop on Dexter Street. And I come here just to uh, voice uh, a concern I have. Um, I've been in business 14 years um, in the city, and over the 14 years, for the most part, it's just been Pat, Barbershop, and myself. Um, and in the last, now going forward, um, we're adding three new barbershops to uh, Dexter Street. Um, and, um, I think that we should really um, be cautious on allowing the same types of businesses to operate in the city because we're only going to hurt one another. Um, and um, <coughs> I, um, I have some notes on my phone because I know this will happen. I'm not the best. Okay, you are fine. <laughs> Uh, 
I'd also like to add um, the fact that you know barbershops bring a certain element, um, and we also have to be careful. You know, that's the you know we want people to come into the city um, from outside. From outside the city, there are people that are, are scared to come to the city. Now that I actually have a restaurant in the city as well, now with the restaurant I see that more than I used to. When people tell me, oh, you know, your, your food is great, but, you know, it's kind of, I, I don't really come to the city because, you know, for, you know, whatever reason they might, image or whatever, you know, um, prejudice they might have against the city. Um, so, um, you know, I, um, I just think that, you know, we should come up together with, because I've talked to several business owners about it, and they feel the same, but, you know, everyone's busy, so it's tough to come here. And you know everyone, you know, voice their concerns sometimes. But um, I think you know we should have some sort of plan on what you know, how many of how many churches do we need, how many how many herbalizers do we need, et cetera, et cetera. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, certainly, we can take that under advisement. At this time, I, I would say at this time, uh, Matt could better answer. I don't believe there's any ordinances putting a limit on such as barber shops or hair salons or herbal life. Uh, that's something we can look into, but as of this moment, I, I don't believe we have any ordinances uh, with any limits on uh, businesses such as that. But it may be something uh, the planning director uh, to look into. He's in the audience tonight. I think he's, he's heard your, your, your concern, and it, it, it could be, so I, I know at this point we have no one that's limited uh, businesses such as that, but it's okay. a good point, and I thank you for coming here tonight. Um, we can take this up further, and when it's under discussion, we can certainly invite you, and uh, we can open up discussion among the council members and the public. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm just going to be real brief. Um, yeah, so anyway. I just wanted to introduce myself. Um, I'm the president of Central Park Police Retirees. Um, one of my members, um, Mike Long, is going to come up and speak to you in regards to um, some assistance we're looking for from you folks. Um, I'm just hoping you can you know, um, assist us as much as you can, understand where we came from, what's happened to us, um, by no fault of our own, and um, yeah, I, I just, the whole thing's been, been, been terrible, it's caused really, really a great deal of harm to a lot of our, our members, some members actually um, going on public assistance and, and other things, and uh, it's not fair that you know, we did our share and did what we were supposed to do, and this happened to us. So, I guess in closing, I'm just, I wanted to introduce myself. Any questions you folks you have, if you want to sit down with us further, we can go over a lot of, uh, of details about what happened and what, what we've lost, what's happened to us. But mainly, I want to uh, just introduce myself. Thank you for taking the time to sit with us. And, um, one last comment that I just can't believe that Shelby, um, Councilman Maldonado's up there when I coached her in baseball when she was like six, so <laughs> I don't know how that happens when I'm 35. <laughs> she, she did say she had a very old coach show, <laughs> and he's in the audience. Okay, thank you all for your time, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Oh. Thank you very much, yeah. Tom Lazier, 1032 Lonsdale Avenue. Um, on the city agenda, I would also like to add my support to the petition by the retirees. I believe uh, what transpired uh, to the retirees in the last review City Review Commission or the uh, State Receiver, I think went above and beyond fairness. I think it needs to be addressed. I mentioned at the last meeting also. Uh, I also would like a copy of number five, 
Uh, I would also like a copy of the finance report. Uh, I also would request a copy of the ordinance number 11. Uh, I object to its passage, uh, public hearing is not a passage, but I'll speak again at that time. Also number 12, uh, I object, I don't believe it's been processed, the process has been followed properly and I object to, as a taxpayer. Uh, number 13 ordinance, uh, I request a copy of. Number 14 ordinance for introduction, I request a copy of. Number 15 ordinance, I request a copy of. Um, as I did at the last meeting, I have, uh, as a member of this, as a Democrat and member of the City Democratic Committee, uh, I was requested a list of names for, for the mayor to choose from to serve on the Board of Canvases. That was requested in December. Uh, that list was complied with. The name that you have before you, and I have no idea who this person is, so I have nothing to, uh, anything to say about it, but it was not on the list. The Democratic Party of the City of Central Falls, which I am a member. And I did, I have spoken to the solicitor about it, and also the mayor. And again, I would just uh, ask that you defer. Um, number 17, uh, I would have liked to see the copy of that memorandum of agreement between the city and local 1627 AFSCME, Council 94, and the AFL-CIO. Uh, I would also like to see a copy of number 18, the resolution regarding the Kuchu Memorial Park, which I fully support. Thank you, Tom. I am requesting these copies because I did go to the city clerk's office to get a copy of these as I did at the last meeting and I request that these be placed when the council are receiving these. Anything that goes before the council is public record at that point and it should be made available to anyone that's requesting it. Uh, I, I've requested you can send it to me an email if you wish but uh, they should be made available you should be able to come to the city clerk's office or come to the meeting and copies of anything that's on the agenda can be requested in the show. So I request that for the future. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Anyone else? Other comments? James, you, what's it regards to you? You're, you're I, really, I should have signed up. I, yeah, I, you I, really. I apologize, Mr. President. It's in reference to the retirees. It will be short and brief. Without objection uh, by fellow council members? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, James. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the council. Mm -hmm. In reference to uh, the Center Falls of retiree, retirees, uh, my name is Representative Jim McLaughlin. I represent District 57 Cumberland Central Falls. Uh, I, I've been heavily involved in, uh, you know, the retirees, both uh, Representative Silva, myself, uh, Senator Crowley. Well, we plan to put forth legislation this year, uh, restoring some of the benefits that were initially taken from our retirees. What I would ask you people to do, and we would need your full support on it, is a resolution from this council supporting our legislation. Uh, I will give the president the uh, document number. Right now, I just have the LC number. It's formally being processed. The uh, LC number is, uh, let me get my glasses on here. <laughs> LC 003462. With that, uh, I would ask your cooperation in this matter. It would help to uh, move our legislation along. Thank you so much. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Public comment? No, no, no. Okay, at this time, I just, before uh, Mike Long speaks, um, I'm going to ask that if we could take item 19, 
And with the motion, move it forward to now, because I think we have some members of the Colombian community here, and rather than have them wait to a series of presentations, if we could get a motion to move this forward and uh, approve the resolution. And so, uh, second, second by Stephen. With that, uh, we have a resolution congratulating you. Uh, you want to read it? It's introduced, introduced by Stephen. So um, in March, um, we'll mark the 50th anniversary of the first Colombian immigrants to arrive in Central Falls, Rhode Island. Um, these uh, brave pioneers were Gustavo Carreño, Valentin Rios, Horacio Gil, and Fidel Diaz. And so I'm introducing this resolution today um, with the intentions of commemorating not only that voyage of those men, 50 years ago, but also celebrating and recognizing the achievements and accomplishments of the Colombian American community since 1954. Um, moreover, I would like to call for the installation of a memorial plaque to be installed at the exterior of this, um, of this building, commemorating that great milestone. Um, and I would like to add that any um, monies allocated towards that installation will not come from city funds and will be um, paid for by private funds. So we do have representatives of the um, Colombo American Cultural Society, and I'd invite you to the podium if you'd like um, to say a few words about you know, why this is important, what this 50th anniversary um, means for the Colombian American community, and why it's important that it's recognized in Central Falls. <coughs> My name is Gabriel Martinez. I'm the president of the Colombian American Cultural Society. Like she said, um, 1964, these three four men came here. The first three men they came here, and actually it was two months after the Beatles came up, and in February they came here. <laughs> so 50 years ago, the Beatles came here. They made more money than us, but that's, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> and although we celebrated 50 years, they came here. They bought the Beatles in English and English. Yeah, yeah. And was uh, 50 years and. Uh, the assassination of President Kennedy also. And it was all these events, and we want to thank the American our community, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, the American community that accept us in here, they welcome us in here at a time when it was, uh, wasn't easy in those years in 1964. Uh, so many things would happen in the country and all over the world. And like uh, Stephanie said, uh, the achievement of the Colombian community has been in a rate of many different um, different issues like medicine, business, laws, and all these people been, been the daughters and, and sons of these people that came here first been, been achieving a lot of success and and we are proud to of the contribution that we all have shared to this community and the community of Rhode Island at large. Which is that's a place. That's, I think that we're not asking for much, just a recognition that all the achievement we have, the contribution we have provided to the city and the state of Rhode Island. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. I thought you, I think it's in 64. You told me you clove with the Beatles, you were the original drummer, and they threw you out. <laughs> they replaced you with Ringo. That, that was the story you told me. Thank you so much. Thank you. I believe there's a hard copy of the resolution that will be available uh, in the next couple of days. Probably Stephanie could have it. Okay. Those in favor of approving, uh, of approving the, we have a motion, I believe, by Amy. I'll make a motion. Tier and Ann second, also seconded by Stephanie. All in favor of approving, approving the resolution, signify by saying aye. Aye. I don't think there's any nays, so move, resolution approved. Thank you so much, congratulations on 50 years. Wish you many, many, many more. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Uh, now the next item on the agenda is item number four, presentation by Mr. Mike Long, the highest the false police officer, and presentation on House uh, Bill Number 6217, the Tribune of Municipal Employees in Central Falls. Mr. Chairman, if I may speak. Absolutely, Mr. absolutely. Um, yeah. I would just like to state for the record that Attorney Mike Long is my brother-in-law. 
Um, today is a for informational session. Uh, if a vote comes to this, I will recuse myself. But at this point, because it's just informational, I will be saying that. Did I do the best? I say good. That's right. I'll say it. <laughs> uh, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to speak with you tonight. Um, the purpose for us being here is to seek your help for the protection of Central Falls police and firefighters who retired after serving this city. By way of background, in July of 2011, the city debt prior to bankruptcy, the city deficit was approximately $5 million. The state of Rhode Island came into this city and put fully one half of that burden, $2.5 million of the city deficit, onto the backs of 120 retired <coughs> firefighters and police officers. First responders, all of them, and for those that were no longer alive, the burden fell to their widow. We had modest pensions here in Central Falls. $26,750 was the average. The cuts by the state of Rhode Island because of the bankruptcy reduced those $26,750 pensions to $16,000.